Okay, welcome everyone to uh, this class on keys to supernatural ministry. Uh, we shall pray and uh, then get started. I want to request one of the students to please lead in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you for okay. this last session that we are going to have for today, Lord. Lord, we ask your presence to be with us, Lord. Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit, God, to please help us to learn for whatever has been taught today, Lord. Lord, I pray, anoint our dear pastor, Father God, for this session, Lord, and whatever she will speak, Father God, let it be for the growth of our spiritual life and for the, for the extension of your kingdom, Father God. Lord, we also commit each and every student into your hands, Father God. Lord, cover us, Father God, as we sit at your feet to learn your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Roslyn. Uh, let's, uh, you know, continue with what we have been talking about so far. We said that uh, we have an invitation from Jesus as his disciples to live a supernatural life, to demonstrate the power of God, um, to minister to people. Uh, and because it is a mandate which is given by Jesus himself, you know, it's something that every believer must desire to walk in. So we've been looking at some of the keys that will help us see the release of the supernatural through our lives. Uh, and even when we started talking about the keys, I shared that it, these are not hard and fast um, as far as the structure or the order of these keys is concerned. But these are all just pointers. The Holy Spirit might lead us to uh, serve through one of the keys or maybe a combination of a couple of these keys. And uh, um, the way in which he might want us to do, the order might vary, you know, uh, situation by situation. But uh, it's nice to recognize that these keys will help us. Now, can there be more keys uh, than whatever we listed out? We listed out only eight keys. Uh, can there be more than eight keys? Definitely, there can be other keys as well. So I'll quickly read out the keys that we have discussed so far. We said understanding the realm of the spirit. Uh, then we said faith is important to see the supernatural. The power of the word of God is required. Uh, renewed mind um, helps the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Then God's presence and glory, proclamation and action. And finally, we touched upon persistence the last week. Uh, so these are all the essential keys. Now, let me just dwell on persistence a little bit more before we move on to section number three. So section two was the eight keys. Section three has to do with personal preparation. And I have posted the notes for us to look at as I uh, talk. But we will talk a little bit about the last key called persistence. So we've seen that uh, there are times when one has to press in to uh, see the manifestation of the supernatural. Now, you know, we can ask the question, you know, why is it that uh, usually, you know, there are, there are uh, instances where the answers come like as a one-step answer, just a you know one-step process, and we see that in the life of Jesus, you know, when he he just uh, speaks to the leper, stretch forth your hand, and his hand is healed right away. A woman thou art loosed, and the woman who was crippled, you know, she is uh, set free from from that crippling spirit, uh, or uh, he he commands spirits to come out, and it all just happens immediately. Uh, but you see there are matters that remain in this area of persistence okay uh, in jesus's own personal prayer time we don't know maybe there could have been times when he persisted to 
pray about certain matters and which is why when he came in public and then he was ministering to the people at that point he doesn't seem to take a long time to pray but the answers come but who knows he could have been persistent in his prayer closet uh, we have seen the example of elijah where we said that uh, he had the promise of god but he persevered in prayer so there is this whole element of persistence perseverance uh, of uh, even travail you know we talked about how uh, a woman labors okay so uh, there is the nine months uh, at least in the human you know human um like biology and medical science and it's just about nine months uh, there are other species that carry their their little ones for longer or shorter periods of time but in the uh, human body we know it's uh, about nine months and then is a time of delivery where one uh, goes into that <coughs> excuse me sharp pain or labor and then happens the birth now paul you no know, talking about his ministry uh, apostolic ministry of seeing the believers become more like jesus so what is all the preaching teaching ministry for to bring the believer to a place of maturity so he said galatians 4:19 you know we saw that he said that a labor in birth so so that christ may be formed in you so there is a labor or a persistence that he was putting in so that the believer might mature in the things of god so there is a persisting you know which he was involved in and similarly in our lives there can be uh, you know a causes which relate to our church community or uh, our city our nation where we are holding on to god for a long period of time and we are praying through same prayers not because we don't have faith but it falls in this category of persisting uh, and you know travailing laboring for the outcome so even for the supernatural there can be times when you know we've prayed a few times and it may have worked out in uh, one person's case um, but in certain situations we will have to pray again and again and labor through for the demonstration of the supernatural so we must remember it's when we are willing to labor that we will see those you know later we might look at the results for example in isaiah 66 verse 7 and 8 you know we uh, read about how supernaturally israel came to exist in a day a nation is born but then god causes that to happen swiftly because labor has gone into it in the form of prayer earlier on so you know these are all some things that we must understand um and uh, we might see that engaging in prayer right that can be a very very important key for us uh and without that we may probably not be able to see the results uh, of the supernatural breaking through uh, so uh yeah let me let me just pause for a bit here uh has anyone had experience of laboring before you see the manifestation of the supernatural okay so uh when we talk about the laboring uh, another key thing that i wanted to say is it's hard to tell how much of time that laboring in prayer will take okay so because just in recent times there's been this one particular um, person um in 
someone I know who's been unwell. And uh, initially, when we prayed for her, uh, she was doing very well. Like she immediately recovered. So uh, you know, we were happy about it. But once again, you know, these episodes of her being unwell started. So what what has been happening is some of us we have uh, you know we we decided that we will take time in fasting uh, in prayer uh, in declaration of scripture for this uh, one sister and uh, pray you know and it's been a few weeks now she's okay but not yet fully uh, uh, recovered slowly she's regaining her strength so, you know, this whole aspect of persevering and being persistent to see the manifestation of the supernatural, you know, I, I'm seeing it in a whole new light as we are uh, standing in prayer for this one particular person. Um, so, yeah, sometimes I think uh, things happen this way, uh, but we must be willing to hold on and press in till we see the results or the supernatural okay so uh, would just like to encourage us no matter how long it takes uh labor and you will see the fruit of it so then uh, let's move on to section three here section three is more of personal preparation okay so we have seen which of the keys will work to release the supernatural but here is who we must be and how we must be in order for us to engage with the eight keys that we talked about. So what does personal preparation require? Some things are listed here in our notes. So we are first going to talk about intimacy with God. That always has to be the place from where um, we will see the flow of the supernatural. Secondly, we will talk about identity. Okay, identity where we are established in who we are in Christ Jesus. Ministering from a place of compassion. That's how Jesus also did his ministry. He always was, was um, you know, carrying that that heart for the people where he wanted to see them healed he wanted them to uh, be set free from the oppression of uh, the devil so a place of compassion so each of us you know we need that heart of compassion if we have to see the supernatural uh, then holiness that's another key walking in dominion and authority uh, is uh, you know another place from where we should minister growing in the anointing uh, and then you know we will touch on a few more points such as impartation uh, inner wholeness humility and learning and expanding so today uh, i'll primarily focus on the first preparation here which is intimacy with god so one important thing is you know we should come to a place in our uh, relationship with god where you know our relationship with god is something that we pursue for the sake of the relationship okay because now that we're talking about keys to supernatural ministry now we look at one of the points for personal preparation and say, I have to pursue intimacy with God so that I can see the supernatural. Now, that won't be the right way of looking at intimacy because you see, there's an agenda in it. What is the agenda? If I am close to God, I will manifest the supernatural. So, I should get close to God, you know. Intimacy with God. Whenever we talk about intimacy with God, you know, it's it's beyond, uh, it's beyond even ministry. So the idea of 
being close to god knowing him in a deeper way and being obedient to him in a deeper way i don't do it so that i can get something isn't it i i think all of us will agree you know, we don't do that uh, when we love our parents so um you know our siblings that if i can prove my uh, closeness with my mother or my father then you know i will get uh, something out of it so it's more of a natural inclination or desire that every believer should have that i must be close to god you know all this flowing in the supernatural and all is bonus additional thank god when you close to god ministry will be very fruitful but intimacy with god is something that we should not pursue with an agenda it's more about love you know it's about god i desire you you know the way uh, david he wrote in psalm 63 lord i'm thirsty for you i'm hungry for you everything in me longs for you uh, and uh, i just want to find you because i need you so that is the place where true intimacy can happen not uh, in a place where we say oh it's a it's a key for the supernatural so be intimate with god it doesn't work like that so that's the most important thing uh, that we must realize about intimacy with god and when we talk about pursuing intimacy there are many things in scripture that uh, brings the presence of god and uh, helps us know god in a deeper way these would be personal worship meditation in god's word um, confession of god's word prayer and fasting so we have seen that you know when one worships uh, we we draw closer to god in his presence uh, we are able to receive uh, the the instructions and the promptings of the holy spirit uh, we meditate in the word of god you know the holy spirit brings revelation to our minds when we are slowly deeply contemplating on the word of god and confession of god's word you know we talk so much about speak to the mountain say to the mountain tell the mountain so there, there are these words that god has given us which we can use with authority and uh, uh, you know things happen so speaking and declaring the word confession of god's word uh, it, it's another thing that brings strength in our personal walk with the lord and of course you know prayer and fasting that we we've talked a lot about that now another important uh, point to make is yes all of these if you want to call them practices are helpful in strengthening our relationship with god but we should not look at it like a law okay uh, otherwise what are we doing you know we are under grace so we are under no uh, pressure to have these rules that oh you should worship for x number of hours or meditate in the word for uh, whatever 15 minutes every day 30 minutes every day there are no rules anymore why do we even do these things as i stated earlier we love god we want to know him more we want to draw closer to him we want to fulfill our purpose that god has for us here on the earth so there are many other bigger reasons why we pursue intimacy with god and these practices help but there are no rules which either the bible imposes on us or you know people should impose on us and say you have to you know you have to it's not it doesn't work like that but you know we knowing the value of these practices we try to walk uh in these practices to reap the benefits so when one is engaging right in personal worship it refreshes strengthens you know uh that person and they fellowship and commune with god in a stronger manner similarly you know everything else 
meditation in god's word confession prayer and fasting so we must remember that employ all of these but not as a law but more like um you know ways through which you and i can get closer to god and of course you know intimacy with god is something that grows now you and i may begin with very little time initially but as you set time aside for god uh, at least in my experience i have learned this that whether it is time in the word or whether it is time in prayer as you continue consistently you know it tends to increase you tend to get a little bit more comfortable you know with with engaging in prayer um and uh, you you come to that place of focus much faster so what is important is to make a consistent effort okay to develop uh, these practices in our lives um i was uh, listening you know to to pastor's uh, testimony and uh, in that you know, he was sharing how uh, in his initial days when he was in school um and he was born again he was so passionate uh, for the lord and nobody told him that you need to spend time with god and you know you need to do bible reading and prayer and such things but somewhere in the depths of his heart he loved god and he just wanted to know more of him so apparently in school days his practice was to wake up at 4 am in the morning and uh, you know make himself a cup of tea and uh, you know he he stated um, very uh, like specific numbers things like you know one and a half hours of meditation in god's word and one and a half hours of something else you know confession so something like that so he had a practice is which he followed and then every saturday apparently you know he would go to his local church and i think there was a space where one could sit and study so he would go there and spend the entire day like from 9 am all the uh, way till about 3 pm reading the word um, uh, and all that and 4 o'clock they would have a bible study so in school days he used to teach a bible study uh, till about 5:30 pm on on saturdays and people will come and learn uh, from him but uh, you know so he was sharing how those school days those initial days of his life were so amazing because he was able to make that kind of time for god um, and then you know he also uh, talked about how um, as time has gone by uh, there are many more responsibilities so uh, while the earlier time with god was so structured and planned and elaborate uh now he it's it's a little more fluid but you know he's still able to make uh intentional you know time uh, available with god otherwise what happens is you know one can get sucked into the responsibilities uh of life and uh, we forego very important things like intimacy with god and i am sure you know all of us can relate with this even for me personally i think over a period of time even i have learned the importance of uh, um spending time with god uh like initially like when i started full time ministry uh i realized that you know i chalk out some amount of time but uh, things used to take longer then what i had planned so then you know it eats into your uh, uh it eats into your schedule and then eventually you uh, you lost that time and not just that uh, you know you're tired by the end of the day and then you know sometimes you at least i've done that you know i i've tended to skip time in prayer and bible reading and i've thought oh god ministry itself is just too hard uh, i'm i'm not able to make time for prayer but i have learned it in fact i should say the hard way that uh, you know you cannot replace that time with the lord with anything else okay ministry or no ministry because as children of god we have been designed in such a way that we have that inner longing uh, for the word for the presence of god so somewhere it's a battle where we have to uh, you know 
every day battle for that time with the lord uh, time in personal worship and you know meditation in the word and confession and prayer fasting so unless we do that you know uh, we are working for the lord but we may not be working with the lord and it's very unfortunate and especially if you know we are talking about supernatural ministry and ministry from that place of doing things in a hurried way uh, it it is not the best worship unto the lord so uh, you know like personally for me i think uh, mornings you know are really really important for me because uh, i feel like that's the quietest time that i get uh, otherwise you know you come to a certain uh, time in the morning and things start spinning so fast you, know, you start getting text messages and emails and this calls and you have to do a thousand things so before you come to that time uh, whatever for me generally it's like 7 7:30 life starts getting busy so before that you know the time that i have with god that i can take some time to read the word of god take some time to pray usually uh, it, it's not very long in the mornings you know about maybe an hour or or maybe slightly more or less than that you know i'm able to manage uh, more or less consistently uh, but then what i do is usually when i go back home the evenings that's when i have uh, more of a time of personal worship so i generally you know play some worship song i sing along um, and uh, you know just make sure that my mind is focused on the lord yes there are many other activities to be taken care of you know for the next day you have to clean and cook and so many things are there but with all that i've learned over uh, the years to carve out time so i try to plan my household chores in such a way that i can you know try and do it quickly or maybe avoid certain things that can be avoided so that i get that time you know just before i go to bed to just spend time in worship uh, you know just spend time in prayer sometimes prayer the evenings i you know i take time longer periods of time in prayer and i feel so refreshed just being in the presence of god and you know pouring out my heart and uh, meditating on scripture and confessing the word uh, and also you know things like uh, i mean it works differently for everyone i'm just sharing my experience you can feel free to uh, have your own routine uh, but i'm saying that as life is getting busier and ministry is getting busier i have learned that these moments with the lord on a daily basis we cannot compromise on it we just cannot compromise on it in fact the busier life gets you know the more we have to fight for our time with the lord uh because that's the place from where we draw in you know the the uh the presence of god that's the place from where we drink right we drink when we are thirsty and in john 7 verse 37 through 39 where jesus is out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water how will the rivers flow if you and i don't drink first okay so it's so important intimacy with god is you know irreplaceable we have to fight for it we have to fight for it uh, and um, you know life is not going to make it any easier but we have to ensure there are things distractions you know usually what what are hindrances to intimacy busyness okay that's a big hindrance we tend to be busy but if we carefully look at our schedule you know we can uh eliminate certain things okay and i i try to do that uh often in my life i see okay what can be avoided can i avoid something can i postpone something so that i can make time for god i don't tire myself out so that in my prayer time i'm alert okay so i i do that and usually i think uh, in a week um uh, uh i mean this this is again it's not a rule you don't have to follow it i'm telling you again uh, but once a week you know uh, have a time of fasting and fasting again don't do it like you know uh, i have to do it but it's more like god i want to be close to you 
so uh, the time of fasting is a time of worship and honor to god so once a week at least one day you set aside if not three meals at least a meal or or two meals you just skip and uh, spend some time with the lord and uh, for me i tend to take usually my sunday afternoons because that's when your uh, church service is done and usually everyone's resting so uh, i get a little bit of rest and i see if i can spend more time in the word more time in prayer so sunday the whole afternoon evening uh, I, i try and avoid you know going anywhere as far as possible but take that time make that time in god's presence because that's the place of our strength and that's the place from which you know we said right uh, out of your belly shall flow rivers the anointing we're talking about the supernatural so how can the supernatural manifest unless these rivers of the spirit flow out of us and for them to flow i have to drink okay so we got to make time we got to uh, uh, you know ensure that all these practices and disciplines if you call it are a part of our life and we avoid distractions uh, so that god's spirit is able to move powerfully in our lives now when we look at the standard which we have before us which would be the very life of jesus you know mark 1 uh, verse 35 we read how jesus woke up early even before you know the, it was daybreak and uh, he went and spent time with the father and we read about jesus in many other places where um, after ministering to the multitudes he came away you know he came apart uh, and he spent time with the father so he is our standard if there was one person who could be excused from spending time with the father we would all vote for jesus we say oh he's already the word you know it was become flesh what is the requirement for him to spend time with the father he can uh, be himself and still see the power of god made manifest but he gave us this example that you know he woke up early he spent time he took time away he uh, you know was intimate with the father through the night luke 6:12 it talks about how through the night he prayed okay and in his most difficult uh, period when he was in the garden of gethsemane just before he had to go up uh, and uh, die on the cross we see that he chose to reach out to god and spend time in the presence of god we know that he prayed right with great intensity he cries out to god in in uh, matthew 26 so jesus his intimacy with the father his worship to the father his prayer life you know uh, prayer times with the father um him even fasting we see that jesus even fasted what is the need for uh, somebody as obedient as jesus to fast because it was his act of worship you know and to the father we see that he pursued intimacy with the father through all of these means and so it sets a standard for us to follow we need intimacy with god ministry or no ministry right but what we are also saying is when we are intimate with the father in this way in john chapter 15 now we read about the branches being connected to the true vine who is jesus the beauty is that the life flows from the vine which is jesus but the branches are the fruit bearing part so how can a branch bear fruit unless it is connected intimately to the vine it can't if you break off a branch of the vine and put it away the passage says it will tie up and that passage 
what Jesus pointed out. He said, without me, you can do nothing. So when we are disconnected from God, maybe for a period of time, we might see God's power manifesting a little bit here and there. But eventually, what will happen? We are cut off. The source is no longer supplying. So the fruit bearing part will stop bearing fruit. Okay, and that's the danger of it, even as far as ministry is concerned. So for the fruit bearing part to continue to bear much fruit, and we see in that passage, you know, Jesus says, I have not, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you, I have appointed you to bear much fruit and fruit which will last. Now, how will we bear the fruit which he has appointed us to bear and this fruit will also last? He says, only if we are connected to the vine. And that connectedness is what we are talking about today. Intimacy, intimacy. We are intimate with God. It's like saying we are walking know in sync with God we are walking in close fellowship communion with God okay the father the son the holy spirit all we are walking with the godhead worshiping them then what begins to happen the power of God will start invading we've seen testimonies after testimonies of you know, people who have spent time this kind of time with the lord their ministries, there's something supernatural about it because it's no longer just the effort of that individual, but it's more. The life of the wine is now beginning to flow, you know, and we see the fruit. Uh, and so uh, today, this is our emphasis, intimacy. We need to develop intimacy with God. So any um, thoughts at this point or any, uh, you know, anything that you want to state about what can be some of the challenges to intimacy with God? Or how do you manage to uh, spend time with God? Um, I think there are times uh, when you really want to get closer to God, but you just won't feel <laughs> Especially when everyone is praising, worshipping, and you see them getting close with God. And there is something on that day that you're just trying, like persistently. Uh, you have this heart, but you still can't just get into those times. Uh, but I think one thing that... Uh, I have learned throughout this uh, time is that God is always there, whether uh, sometimes whether I'm feeling him or not, he's always there. And uh, as we, as you said, like, we just have to pursue him, uh, just keep pressing on, pressing on. And I, I don't think there will be a moment like when you just seek him and he won't come. He just wants you to pursue him. And for sure, at least in a glimpse of second, you can feel his presence, and uh, yeah. But it's all about us just uh, us just chasing him and pursuing him, and uh, and one of the thing I think sometimes it's the distractions when you had something happened in your life in the morning, and suddenly now it's prayer time, and you're like uh, you remember what happened in the morning, <laughs> and now you just can't get closer to God, but. No matter what happens, he's always there. And he never looks into us. He just looks into our heart, whether it is it uh, seeking him or desiring him. And we just have to, we just have to understand his love. <laughs> that uh, neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, nothing can separate us from his love. When we understand that, I think we can really feel his presence no matter what. Yes, thank you, Jeffina. You made many uh, good points. Um, you said that uh, it's not about our feeling. Okay, So if we go by our feelings, then we will be misled. So even at times when we don't feel, we can intentionally seek after the presence of God. And you know, you talked about okay, you talked about seeking, where uh, 
it tells us that there is something proactive seeking is not casual or it's not like automatically uh, things falling on you but we have to make an effort so i've uh, posted the scripture uh, in the chat which says uh, jeremiah 29 13 and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart so intimacy that's why we say pursue intimacy we will not get this automatically we've got to make some effort okay so seek me search for me then what will happen you will find me is what god is saying so uh, there's something you know in the spiritual dynamics where it's when you pursue that you get it okay so uh, we've got to see how how can i how can i pursue what are the things i can do in my personal you know schedule and the way i am that i can chase after god better and better and better so uh yeah something to think about so thanks uh, jeffina for adding these two points uh anything else uh, others want to share about your journey with the lord and intimacy okay uh rosalind has posted how can we help ourselves to keep the prayer graph always up okay because there are times when we do so uh, good in seeking god and then there is uh, this prayer graph comes down uh, how can we keep distractions away intentionally okay so uh, rosalind again i think you know this question very honest question and i agree with you because it happens even in my life okay uh, and uh, as i shared earlier the the as the days go by i am finding it more and more difficult to make time for god unless i I'm determined to to do that. Uh, so, one thing I want to say is we must be realistic. Okay, when we become very uh, legalistic about you know spending time with God, then it becomes a chore. It becomes a burden. You know, it becomes a task that you want to tick off every day. So, one important thing is to be realistic. so we all ideally would love to have uh, you know the structure uh, where we say okay i will do one hour of this two hours of that in the morning then i will do something else something else so if that is possible and in some seasons of our life it is possible you know i uh, had taken some time off in the year 2020 because of my father's illness uh, and so i was not at work anymore i was only engaged with my home responsibilities for about 2 months or so so my schedule was very different i was able to you know have extended periods of time by myself because physically uh, i don't find it exer- exerting any but once ministry restarted i've learned to be more flexible okay rosalind so that is my advice uh, be flexible figure out maybe a time where uh, a part of the day when you spend time in the word and then you figure out another time when maybe you're spending time in prayer uh, maybe another time when you're spending time in worship it's okay it's all right it's when we start becoming very rigid that uh, you know you're not able to keep the graph uh, so steady uh, but ensure every day that you know you have made time for uh, all or most of of what we are talking about so that way you will be more consistent in in doing it yes it is ideal if you can stick to the same time uh, every day at the same number of hours that's an ideal scenario i don't know how many of us can actually uh, you know make that happen so be realistic then i think your graph will be more or less steady then uh, how to how can we keep distractions away intentionally i think we'll have to reflect uh, rosalind and i have also done that you know where is my time going i have to ask that question so yeah recently i i figured out uh, that okay it's a little personal but i'll share anyway sometimes you know when um, like just before going to bed i had this this habit of listening to sermons so i only listen around that time 
uh, other times you know i i cannot focus so just before falling asleep i would just play you know some of my uh, favorite preachers and some but you know what i learned i learned it's interfering with my sleep and only in the last two three weeks i realized it's actually not doing me any good because i'm not focusing because i'm almost you know going off to sleep uh, but there's the sound and it's interfering with my sleep and sometimes that affects me i'm not able to wake up uh, you know on time when i i want to so i decided okay no more doing that if i want to listen to a sermon i'll do it more intentionally so i do it at another time where i'm listening you know more carefully to what i am playing uh, so just a small example so i cut that off uh, and i make sure i don't look at my phone you know so at least like let's say an hour before you go to bed so then what's happening you're calming yourself down and uh, you know you probably uh, get better sleep and then you're able to wake up in the morning and spend that time that you so desire to spend with the lord so just some small little uh, you know tips like that so i figured out one distraction for me so you got to figure out sit down and reflect where is your time going where is your energy going and then you know you could uh, avoid that i hope it helps yeah oh yeah sure phone i know that's like a huge distraction for all of us so we must uh do something about it okay good good thanks zeli good tips she says also uh one more quick thing i'll just share which i have learned i think conserving your energy so i learned like this these are all my personal reflections what i tend to do is through the day i work in such a way that at the end of the day i'm exhausted okay so that's just my habit that's the way i i work so i realized when i am doing that it's so much more difficult for me to wake up the next day so what i've learned to do is intentionally be more productive during the day you know if it's a study time or if it is uh, you know work time i put all my energy in it so that i can finish that work more efficiently and quickly so that i don't you know uh, eat into extra time of the day so then when i get back home i am able to get a little bit of rest you know in in that period evening 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock a little bit of just winding down helps because then uh, i i'm able to maybe you know uh, engage in whatever your dinner cooking whatever arranging things for the next day everything and then rest a little more strong in a stronger way i'm not so tired anymore uh, and that helps me wake up earlier you know early enough the next morning so these are all just some practical things which i've had to do personally to improve my own prayer time so i think each of you can uh, take a piece of paper sit down and reflect okay what are all the changes i can make conserve time conserve energy uh, carve it out for the lord and you know spend time with the lord instead all right so i think uh, <clears throat> we've um, chatted about a few things if there's anything more uh, we can probably you know share those thoughts in the next class so let's pray and close for now uh, i just want to invite one of us to pray please Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the class that we had, God. God, we thank you for the intimate relationship that you have with us, Jesus. Thank you for looking at us, looking at our desires, who we are, Jesus. That you are thinking about us, but we have got this privilege, we have got this grace, and we are so thankful for it, Jesus. Help us to use our time wisely, that we get into such an intimate relationship with you, Jesus. 
help us to have a ministry where the ministry is birthed out of the intimate relationship that we had and nothing else god as we grow in our ministry as we grow in our knowledge about you help us to spend more time with you jesus give us this heart that seeks your kingdom and uh, your will above everything jesus i place each and every one of my classmates into your hands we rebuke all the distractions in the name of jesus we rebuke all the distractions the satan is placing in our life in the name of jesus and we as your children we push you jesus we chase your kingdom god above all us so we feel help us to fill our heart with your words with your will and with your knowledge so that we can chase your kingdom jesus i place everyone into your hands you lead them you guide them we still stand in awe of your love towards us jesus we thank you for your love we thank you for your grace we thank you for your ultimate love that was expressed on the cross help us to spread this love boldly to this whole world jesus be with us and guide us in jesus name i pray amen Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jafina, and thank you, everyone. Uh, have a blessed um, week ahead, and we shall connect uh, next Wednesday. Okay, so take care. Thank you, and bye. Thank you, ma'am.